Lamp lighters have been around since 1812. It used to be about 25,000 employed because every street had gas lamps. Now, nah, there's only five of us left. We're the last lamp lighters left in London, and this job has a big history behind it. Around the early 80s was the last time that someone physically went round with a, a pole and lit the gas lamps and went round in the morning and turned them off. So after that was when the mechanical clocks was adapted to fit every single gas lamp. It's literally like a grandfather clock. You put a key in and you wind it up. We can set the times twice a day and we change them timings to sunrise and sunset every day through the year. This is um, a lamp that we're working on and we're doing this for the King's coronation. So we've been given special permission for a couple of weeks just to change the colour of one lamp. So we've been gold leafing the cornice around the top and we're just doing the edges and the crown. So the crown's all been gold leaf. We'll repaint the red and the green. And this is a clock, a timer which is going to be going inside the, and we've just gold leafed that as well. So after the coronation, a couple of weeks after, unfortunately they have to go back to being black. When Queen Victoria's husband died, all the furniture around the palaces was painted black. A lamplighter in the 1800s, for example, would have either had a, a cycle or they'd be on foot and walk down the street lighting every single lamp every few yards for their row of houses or few rows of houses that they would look after. And they would do that every day and night at the crack of dawn and at dusk, whatever time that may be, to light and then extinguish the lamps. They would use a pole with a wick on the end and they would just stick that up and then light the lamp every evening. Lamps weren't just for external lighting, so you used to have a lot of indoor lamps. These are some of the lights that we use for actual um, lighting traffic signals. And this would have been one of the lanterns that actually illuminated that traffic signal for the policeman. Unfortunately, that only lasted two months in the early days of these lights and it actually exploded, killing the police officer in 1868. Pre-gas lighting, London was a very dangerous place, really. I mean, there was hardly any illumination on the streets. If you imagine today, with just the sort of ambient light you get from shop windows and electricity nowadays, but back then there was absolutely nothing. Pall Mall was where the first lamp was invented and shown back in 1807 and it was for King George III's like to be known as Mad King George's birthday. From 1812, in the next decade or so, 50,000 gas lamps were put up within a decade really, so it's quite a, quite a large evolution of gas lighting very quickly. The Great Stink of 1858 was a real problem for Londoners because it was one of the hottest summers they had ever been on record and Parliament couldn't even sit occasionally because of the stench of raw sewage piling into the river. So the actual sewer lamp was built to try and take away some of that smell and burn off some of the methane and sewer gas that was building up down these streets of London. Even though London was now illuminated with gas lighting, it was still smoggy and so smoggy every now and again, you would actually be able to feel your way round by the King's ciphers that actually shows who was the reigning monarch at the time. So you, when it was so smoggy, you couldn't see your way around town, you could actually feel your way via the lampposts. Working in some of the places, you feel like you've gone back to the 1800s. The glow that they give off is, you can't replicate it. It's, it's a really beautiful orange light. This is a bit of history that people love. It's beautiful because it doesn't change much. 
think gas lamps are fantastic. I mean, it's a real privilege for us to look after them and be the custodians of the gas lamps. They're in such iconic locations and historical locations, and they've seen so much history over the years.